Hi everyone and welcome to today's demonstration where we're going to take a look at the white source unified agent and how that can be used to be downloaded and used locally to scan an application for known vulnerabilities and licenses consumed within the project. As the name suggests, the unified agent is very portable in its design. So this can be consumed in a pipeline, obviously on a local developer's workstation, or even in a Dockerized container as well. Today, we'll take a look at how we can do that locally and get up and running very quickly. But my name is Luke Brogan, and I'm one of the solution engineers here at Whitesource. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I'm gonna go ahead and exit PowerPoint and head over to the browser. We have a great article all around getting started with the Unified Agent, which is available on the White Source Wiki. Here we have everything from the prerequisites required, which is just having Java installed on the agent or on your device. And we're going to some of the capabilities of the Unified Agent and how it can be configured and some of the best practices and general tips around the Unified Agent. But for now, we can go ahead and click on the download section. We can see the current release of the Unified Agent. And we can just simply click on the JAR file to download the Java application of the Unified Agent. Once that's completed, we would then recommend you to move that into a dedicated directory so we can then reference it to scan any local projects you may have. So you can see here, we put the unified agent just within my white source directory here. So next we need an application to scan. So for that, I'm just gonna head back over to my browser. I'm gonna go over to GitHub. And here we have an excellent project uh, which is purposely vulnerable called NodeGoat. And this is a Node.js application which uses NPM as a package manager. And what we're going to do is clone this repository and use it as a reference application. So to get started, we can go ahead and copy the URL for that. I'm going to go ahead and use PowerShell. I'm just in the data source directory where I can just simply do my git clone, paste the URL in, and we'll take a copy of that application. And that's all completed for us. Now, we mentioned NPM as a open source dependency manager in this project, but we're not going to run NPM in store. We're gonna let the unified agent automatically detect that for us. It will not only resolve the dependency manager, but it'll also pick up loose binary files, uh, source files, and build up that complete list of open source components. So we're gonna, gonna go ahead and just close this PowerShell session down. We've taken a copy of NodeGoat. So the next step is to build our command arguments and how we can actually scan this. There are two pieces of information which we're gonna go ahead and grab straight away. And that is the API key for your organization and the user key if you've got user authentication enabled, which is one of our best practices. So we'd certainly recommend that is switched on for the organization. So to get those two key pieces of information, head over to your white source dashboard. The user will have to be an administrator to see the integrate tab at the top menu item. And once we click on that, we can go ahead and grab the API key for the organization here. Copy that to your clipboard and we use that in your text editor. If you have user authentication enabled, you'll have to go over to your profile, scroll down. You can see user keys. And for any new integrations, we'd also recommend generating new user keys as required rather than reusing your old ones. But if you need to, you can just go ahead and click the copy icon here and use that in the command argument. So going back over to your text editor, let's take a look at some of the, the arguments required to run the initial scan. First of all, we need to invoke obviously Java. 
with the unified agent jar file. The mandatory API key has been set. The optional user key has been set. The minus D parameter is the directory we wish to scan, which is node go in this application. We also need to set the product and project name in the application hierarchy. And these could be variables, but for now, I'm just going to hard code that as node go. And if you do not specify the white source URL, the default environment is SAS white source software. So if you are deployed to SAS EU, App EU, for example, then you will also have to specify this at the end of the argument anyway. Once that's done, we can then copy the commands here. And just to reference, these are all inline arguments. There are two other ways we can set these values. We can also do this in environment variables, obviously in Windows and Linux systems. And we can also use a white source configuration file. The usual best practice, especially in pipelines, is to run as environment variables because of the flexibility and the ease of deployment. But if you're just scanning locally, then inline arguments is a great way to get started very quickly. So we can copy that, head over to PowerShell. I'm in the data white source directory where the unified agent is currently living. If we just do the dir, we can see the unified agent jar listed there. We paste in our command, just hit enter. And the unified agent will now give you a detailed output. And once that's complete, we can see the exit code has been successful, which is always great. The configuration was obviously fetched very quickly. If that was a configuration file or in line, for example, it's detected NPM as a dependency manager completely automatically. And it's also detected 463 total dependencies with 380 of them being unique. If there's been any um, source files or binary files which have been detected, that will also flag up in this area here. Finally, we've updated the inventory on the dashboard. So what we can do now is go ahead, head over to the home page, and we can now see no go available as an application. Let's go ahead and click on that. And now we can dive into some of the more details about the scan which has taken place. The first area of interest is the software bill of material. 380 open source components make up the node goat application. So that's a great insight there. We know what is being used to build this application and it's all detailed within the table here. We can also see 12 components have newer versions available, which is certainly an area of interest in terms of upgrading and maintaining good health of our open source components. Luckily, we don't have multiple deployments of the same open source components here, but five of them have been deployed with multiple licenses. So this could be an area we could dive into to see which one is most applicable for the organization. 22 vulnerable open source libraries with 28 unique vulnerabilities. We have the high, medium and low severity, which has been calculated using CVSS standards. And interestingly, in the bottom right, we've also broken down the license consumption in the project. So these are traffic light items. If it's green, then usually it's, it's open source friendly and obviously can be consumed with much less risk of copyright and patent uh, loyalties. But if there was any GPLs or AL GPLs listed here, those would be most likely highlighted red because they're higher risk for most organizations. But if you want to dive down further into the vulnerabilities, we can click on this area here. We have all of the CVEs, the libraries which are affected, the scoring and severity of these issues. And we can click on the details of any one of these and we'll receive more descriptions. And most importantly, the remediation to fix this vulnerability. In most cases, it's the case of 
upgrading that package or component in order to mitigate that known vulnerability. So I hope you've enjoyed that demonstration in a quick start guide of the unified agent running locally. Of course, if you have any questions, just let us know. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.